Hi, I'm Phil. I work at Office Inn. I'm a big fan of mobile working and one of my favorite mobile working tools is Miro. Miro is a digital whiteboard and if you're going to be taking remote working seriously you're definitely going to need it because uh, when teams are collaborating to come up with ideas, to sort sticky notes, to share maps and plans, to do quick scribbles of design drawings or whatever, digital teams need to get some work really done. Um, you got to have a shared place to do it. Miro is really good. It's reasonably priced and it's got a shed load of features um, and it's really quick to use and worth doing. So I'm going to show you some of my very favorite tricks in Miro. Um, I think the first one that's super good is the way you can bulk create sticky notes. So um, here's some cats that I downloaded from the uh, internet earlier. If I copy this list of cats, and I go back to the whiteboard that I got here and I paste it, then there they all are as sticky notes straight away, uh, which means you can get to work sorting them and grouping them and identifying similarities and whatever. And then you can uh, take those shapes, take any shapes you've imported and you can very quickly turn them into other shapes. So if you don't want them to be sticky notes, you can turn them into diamonds or you can turn them into uh, little Kanban tickets as well, which are kind of similar to sticky notes except that they've got some uh, extra space for you to um, add metadata and notes on the back there too. Um, you can, on a sticky note, you can add tags. I've got a couple of tags which I set up, one best and one cute. And so you can tag notes in various ways. And when you're happy that you've got things just the way you want them, you can uh, export um, them to CSV. Um, which can be useful if you say wanted to then take them on into Trello or something like that notion. So those are some pretty good things. You can also do voting in, um, in Miro, which is uh, slightly wacky, but the idea is that you know if you've got multiple people using the board simultaneously, they can uh, have a very organized and well-maintained uh, voting session, which is strange but good. And of course, uh, when I say multiple people can use the board, well, that's the whole point, isn't it? It would be kind of dull if you could only use it on your own. As you can see, I've set up, um, I, I'm, I'm also using this board from another device, and you can see my, my other mouse. It's that orange one moving around. There's my black one for this uh, computer, and the orange one from the other computer. And you can have lots and lots of people, and it's uh, quite entertaining to see those little colored mice flocking around uh, the board. What's great, though, is that you don't have to screen share, particularly when you're using Miro. You can screen share, obviously, but you don't have to if you're using a um, you know, video, uh, video conferencing tool. Um, you can have that running in the background, so you've got the audio, but you can actually see what people are pointing to on the board because you can see their mice moving right there in Miro, which is really good. Another very interesting uh, trick about Miro is that every object has a hyperlink of its own. So every object has a unique URL. You can uh, pick one like that. There we go. And I can say copy link. And then I've now make, I can now make a link to, uh, to that object. Um, and uh, I can use that. So for example, in Slack or anywhere, I can say, oh, I want you to take a look at this thing. And I can uh, very specifically um, <clears throat> point to the thing that I uh, that I want somebody to look at. Um, so, got it. There we go. And then if I click on that, I can go racing over to the object that I was referring to, which is quite groovy. Um, so, as I say, we use it definitely for uh, collaborative work where we're trying to prioritize and group and understand information. We use it for plans and maps of things. So, you know, this is how the system hangs together. This is the roadmap of what we're going to do, that kind of stuff. Um, and we also use it for doing quick design fix ups. So, we were actually doing one of those late last week, about Thursday last week. Um, we had a piece of uh, offers in we didn't like and we wanted to very quickly change it so this was the screen we didn't like we thought the copy wasn't quite right so um, we knew we could just very quickly chuck on the white rectangle and a turquoise rectangle and some copy um, and that would be quite good enough uh, Jethro who was going to be implementing the front end could quite happily uh, work with that use the components out of the component library and he knew what we were getting at and we could just say here here's a here's a super quick link to the thing we're after 
uh, and um, so yeah that's great you can't do because it's a whiteboard you can't do fancy fancy design yeah you've only got a very limited number of fonts um, and you uh, have to keep things simple you can do grouping and so on but you can't do layers so it's uh, it, it, it's quite good as a sketching tool but for a detailed design tool that's not what it's trying to be which is really good um, one of the um, other interesting things I guess is that you can um, uh, you can use it on an iPad so uh, I've got my iPad uh, connected up to this uh, that's what my where my other mouse is my, my other mouse is coming from there and I can uh, on the other on the iPad say uh, I want to be in uh, in line drawing mode and I can uh, actually you know draw lines like I would on a whiteboard if you really want the uh, the uh, crazy bad handwriting uh, uh, experience of a real whiteboard that's also a possibility um, what we found with Miro is that people uh, adopt it really easily. You don't have to work hard to get people to start using this tool. They can pretty much see the, IA, the, the value and the idea um, and they can get stuck in very fast. <coughs> um, it's very easy to use and it, because it's a great way to communicate, people gravitate towards it. So adoption is not a problem. Some organizations though can be worried about um, whether there's a confidentiality issue. So some documents, perhaps, uh, some companies perhaps are not uh, totally comfortable with putting documents um, on the, in the cloud. Um, there's a few kind of points to note there, um, uh, I think. The first one is, well, the cloud is secure. Millions of businesses are relying on, uh, on software as a service and cloud-based solutions every day. Um, and uh, one of the things to also kind of uh, think about is that ultimately your whiteboards tend to be kind of, through, of full of scribbles and bits and pieces and they're not actually very interesting to a competitor. So if a competitor did somehow break into your whiteboard, which is pretty hard to do, um, all, th all they'd see would be kind of miscellaneous stuff, which they most of the time wouldn't be able to do anything with. Um, your stuff isn't actually as interesting as you think it is a lot of the time. Um, but on the other hand, there are some things that, you know, there's no point in being daft. So storing highly confidential stuff on a digital whiteboard like this um, isn't a great idea. Um, so don't store like customer details on here or something like that. It's not necessary and it's just not a good idea. And if you've got super confidential specification docs that describe exactly how the security protocols of your organization work or something like that, then don't embed them perhaps on a digital whiteboard either. Instead, you can put a URL on like I showed earlier, which points to um, something in a trusted location like behind a firewall or in, a, in an area where you're extremely confident that uh, you've got the security levels you need. So <clears throat> those are those are some kind of tips about how you might be sensible with a cloud-based digital whiteboard. Um, uh, the last thing, the last tip is because these things are so much fun um, and because you can put anything you like on, you know, you can just drag an image on uh, whatever floats your boat, look, you can just like drag an image on and you're done. Um, you uh, you need to sort of be careful that things don't proliferate. So frames like I've been using here are quite good for kind of organizing and labeling chunks of content um, so that uh, you can kind of follow through from one thing to another um, and that uh, you can kind of follow what's happening on the board. Otherwise it can get a bit um, crazy and out of control. So there we go. I think it's going to be super useful to you. I have never met a digital dev team who didn't like Miro, and um, I hope you can use it too. It's moder moderately priced um, and super powerful. Thanks for listening.